All right, we'll get started. Welcome to our Beef and Forage Management Webinar Series. Uh, this afternoon we'll have Dr. Galen Erickson from the University of Nebraska. He'll visit with us about de-oiled distiller's grains. If you uh, have a question uh, and you're listening to this webinar, uh, use the chat box in your lower right, left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, you can type your question in there, and uh, I'll make sure Galen uh, gets that question. So, Galen, I'll turn it over to you now. Okay. Well, there's been a lot of interest in this topic, and particularly from a cattle perspective, because we use a lot of distiller's grains on, okay, what does it do to uh, the nutrition of the distiller's grains if you pull some oil out? Now, <clears throat> I want to start with the fact that, that this is a, there, there's multiple processes out there that will take fat out of the, uh, out of the um, distiller's grains. The one that we're going to be talking about is the one that's rapidly increased in popularity, where we think just in a year's time or so, half of the plants start taking it out using this process. And uh, plans are that probably the rest of them will be using the process in the very near future if they're not already. So it's by far the most popular method. And it's different because it is where they are centrifuging the soluble stream to remove some of the oil that's not, not attached or, or encapsulized in the grain. <clears throat> Why are they doing that? Well, because they can centrifuge it off and get it off. And uh, they get more per pound for oil than they do for the distiller's grains if it had the oil in it. And so from a pure economic standpoint, it makes some sense from an ethanol plant perspective. So here's the point. In general, distiller's grains have 12 to 13 percent fat, which I'm going to refer to as kind of normal as we go through this. But if you look at where that fat's partitioned, that 12 or 13 percent, about a third of it's in the solubles portion, and about two-thirds is in the grains. And that varies some from plant to plant and how they operate. In essence, what they're doing then is they're removing a third uh, of the oil, which is the fraction that's in the soluble stream. So we think that the new de-oiled distiller's grains will run 8 percent fat. Uh, I'm going to show you some data here today that was some that was 7 to 9. And so... Uh, is that going to be the new normal in the future? Probably. So I think it's important to talk a little bit about how this process works in the plants and then get into some of the performance data. So here you start with corn. In this case, it's corn. You can use other grains. And they're really converting the starch to ethanol. They, they convert the starch to sugars. Then the yeast ferment the sugars to CO2 and ethanol. And that's where all of the starch theoretically goes, which is about two-thirds of the kernel. What's left is then all the parts in corn that don't have uh, starch, which we would call whole stillage in those plants. That whole stillage then is centrifuged. Mark Corrigan, who was a PhD student, did those slides. So you can see it. they spin that whole stillage, and they get wet distiller's grains, which is the solids part, and then a liquid part that's still probably 95% water, 5% solids. That thin stillage component eventually becomes the distiller solubles, sometimes called condensed corn distiller solubles, also sometimes called syrup. That is the fraction, again, that they're centrifuging further. So they're taking this thin stillage in this, this soluble stream this is the part that the fat's being removed out of. So if you're buying distiller solubles or corn syrup with the fat removed, it'll have a lot less fat than what it normally would have. If you're buying wet distiller's grains or modified distiller's grains or dry distiller's grains plus solubles, which is very common, then it will have less fat, but it has less fat because they removed the fat out of this one stream the plus solubles. OK, so we've done a couple of growing uh, trials, so with forage-based diets. I'm going to talk about those two here today. Uh, both of them had 84 day, were 84-day studies with, with individually fed cattle using our Kalen Gate system at the Ag Research and Development Center. <clears throat> 
So to start with, uh, just talking, the, the first study was with solubles, um, and so make sure you keep that in mind that this is only looking at feeding the syrup part in forage-based diets. The two solubles that we got were from the same plant. One of them, uh, the, the one set of, of solubles had the deoiling process running where they were centrifuging it off, and so the fat was 6.3%. Same plant, when they weren't running that, that centrifuge process, the solubles had 20.1% fat. So you can see that this is the difference then of that deoiled process. So when we fed this, we, we, uh, uh, Melissa Jolly was a student. Uh, she fed it in a grass hay silage blend diet. And so a fairly high quality diet. You can see that, that the control cattle just fed that forage gained a little over one and a quarter pounds a day with a conversion just under 10 pounds per pound a game. Then she fed the de-oiled solubles uh, again, that was 6.3% fat at either 20 or 40% of the diet, and then the normal fat solubles at 20 or 40% of the diet. So starting off with looking at the 20% inclusion, those cattle gained just over 2 pounds a day, and numerically was a little higher, but was not significant for, for more gain on the normal fat solubles. But conversion was better for the normal fat distillers when included at 20% of the diet. However, when you looked at the 40% level uh, of feeding or 40% inclusion of syrup, now there was still a small numerical increase in gain, but the conversions were not statistically significant uh, in terms of being different, both converting at about 5.7. And that makes some sense because at 20% inclusion, the fat is not inhibitory in a forage-based diet. And so when you feed 20% of the normal fat solubles, we actually got better conversions than if we fed 20% low fat. But at 40% inclusion, now the fat can become inhibitory to the forage-based diet, and we're probably hindering forage digestion some in that normal fat 40% inclusion. Now that was with syrup. This is with modified distiller's grains plus solubles, and again, it was a growing diet, but these, the base diet is, is essentially corn stalks. This was some work that, that's going to be coming out in our 2014 Nebraska Beef Report by Meredith Bremer, where she fed a control diet that had 40% corn, and then the remainder of the diet is corn stalks. And you can see those cattle gain 1-3 and convert just under 10 which was very similar to just the forage-based diet that we fed in the previous study. We did that to kind of see how feeding the distiller's grains, the modified distiller's grains, would compare to feeding corn at 40% anyway. So in this study, again, we had 20 or 40% de-oiled modified distiller's grains. Now remember, that's got distiller's grains plus solubles, and so the, the modified distillers in this study was 7.2% fat if it had been de-oiled, compared to normal at 20 or 40%, which was 12% fat. So uh, somewhat different than the previous study, if they were only fed 20% distillers with, with essentially 80% corn stalks, the gains were, were about three-quarters of a pound a day, and those were not statistically different. Conversions, uh, just around 14. And again, they both have A's, so they were not statistically different. And then if you look at the 40% inclusion, again, the gains went up compared to the 20% inclusion, but were not statistically different than, than uh, between the de-oiled modified distillers and the normal and conversions were almost identical. If anything, you can see numerically the gains were greater on the, nor on the de-oiled dis modified distillers as compared to the normal. So again, suggesting not much impact. So those are the two primary studies um, when, we, when we feed uh, uh, forage-based diets and look at whether we use a de-oiled process or not. Now, with, with feedlot diets, um, I want to talk about them, and then I'll, I'll maybe come back to questions, Rick. Uh, 
we've done a lot of studies looking at how wet, modified, and dry distillers' grains plus solubles feed. And in feedlot diets, it varies depending upon the inclusion of the diet. Where wet distillers is about 130% uh, the value of corn, modified is about 120, and dry is about 111. But we wanted to study this now, and that was across a bunch of different studies. This is in the same study with the same cattle, and we saw almost the same exact effect, that as we look at wet distillers, we get the best conversions, modified or intermediate, dry or the poorest, but notice that they're all better than just feeding a corn-based diet. And so I want to, with that in mind, we have primarily only looked at wet and modified distiller's grains in finishing diets with and without this oil removal. So that's the next set of studies I'm going to talk about. So the first study was, um, was kind of our, our first attempt at this, and we had 25 pens. All the modified distiller's grains was from uh, Green Plains in Central City, and we also fed solubles in this study that came from the same plant. So this was some work uh, that's been put, put in our uh, 2013 Nebraska Beef Report by Melissa Jolly. She fed 27% solubles or 40% solubles, but the, con the, the, the composition of, of the solubles, similar to the growing study that she fed, was either 6 or 21% fat, and the modified was just over 9 or just under 12 for fat. And you can see how the rest uh, changed a little bit as you take out some fat, but not, not very dramatic. So she fed 27% solubles that either had the oil removed or not, and these p-values, these are p-values, all those are quite large. They're all quite a bit above 0.1 and certainly above 0.05. What that means is, is that cattle didn't eat a different amount. Again, these are calf-fed finishing cattle. They didn't gain a different amount, and they didn't have a different conversion. And if anything, numerically, the de-oiled, uh, the the, the Steers finished uh, on 27% uh, de-oiled solubles. If anything, had a numerically better conversion. Now, remember, we also fed 40% modified distillers that was either de-oiled or not. And similar to the solubles, notice that all of these p-values are quite a bit above 0.05 and, and certainly above 0.1. So there's no difference in intake no difference in gain, and no difference in feed conversion uh, when we look at finishing calf feds, fed 40% modified distiller's grains with or without this oil. Now, again, remember that's 9% uh, fat versus uh, just under 12. Now, they all did better, similar to what I was talking about before. We had a corn control, and those cattle gained the least per day and converted the poorest compared to all four of these diets with the distiller's byproducts, which, again, is something we've observed in lots of different studies. But, but whether the oil was in there or not did not influence performance in that first study. We followed that up with, uh, with another experiment where we had seven treatments in 42 pens. All of this was fed wet distiller's grains, which was sourced from Kappa. Uh, um, here in Nebraska. We looked at feeding uh, de-oiled wet distillers versus normal distillers, again, by them turning on or off that process in the plant and us getting the, the resulting distillers grains. In this study, the de-oiled wet distillers grains was just under 8% fat, and the normal was just under 12 and a half. Again, probably typical of what we should expect uh, for de-oiled in, in the future. And you can see the ranges at the bottom across different loads. Again, this is uh, going to be in our 2014 Nebraska Beef Report by Melissa Jolly. So I'm going to start off with we fed a corn control and then 35, 50, or 65 percent wet distiller's grains in the diet on a dry matter basis. So those are very high levels uh, considering what normally fed, we would normally be feeding down in this area. This is looking at dry matter intake and, and, and then looking at de-oiled in the blue 
and normal fat wet distillers in the red. And the cattle fed the higher fat distillers tended to eat less, especially at those higher inclusions. Uh, gains were not really impacted. Statistically, there was a little bit of a numerical increase in gain as we, as we increased the oil distillers. There was really no effect as we increased normal. And then if we look at fee conversion, uh, basically this line is the fee conversion as we increase the oil distillers. This bottom line or the better line is as we increased uh, inclusion of normal distillers. But what about comparing the two? And so this, because it's a factorial, this is looking at just the average of the 35, 50, and 65 percent level. And uh, you can see here, if we look at, at those averages for de-oiled or normal wet distiller's grains, cattle tended to eat less of the normal distiller's grains. The gains were the same. And while there's a numerical improvement in conversion, we did not pick up a significant difference in feed conversion, but that's about a 2.6% difference between those two distiller's grains um, if you look at just feed conversion. And I have the carcass characteristics there at the bottom. But notice, again, similar to previous studies, cattle fed just the corn-based diet, gained less, and converted poorer. So regardless of which type of distiller's you fed, the cattle fed distillers gain, gain and, and convert better than feeding corn, but there was no statistical difference between whether it was de-oiled or normal. And then the third and, and final study is, uh, is some more recent work just finished here in June, and so it will not actually come out until our 2015 Nebraska Beef Report. Um, here again, we had seven treatments, and all the distiller's grains came from Green Plains, uh, again, at Central City. We had 0, 15, 30, 45, or 60 percent inclusion of de-oiled modified distillers. And then at 15 and 30 percent of the diet, we also included normal distillers, or, or basically them not running that process, and just fed them at two of those levels. This is dry matter intake uh, going from 0 to 60 percent inclusion, and the blue dots are de-oiled distillers. The, the red dots are normal. I want to point out that the, the y-axis does not go to 0, so, so there looks like there's a difference there, but it's pretty small between the normal and the de-oiled. But we do see a fairly dramatic quadratic response, tended to be quadratic, uh, as we increase inclusion of, of distiller's grains, you see an increase in intake and then a slight decrease as we get to higher levels. Average daily gain, uh, again, the blue dots are de-oiled and the red dots are normal. And uh, you can see how those compare at 15 and 30 percent inclusion. But the response curve to just adding de-oiled distillers on gain it tended to be quadratic, and so there was a, an increase as you increase inclusion of distillers and gain, and then some leveling off as we went to inclusions above 45. So as a result, um, uh, this is feed conversion. It was significantly linear as we increase inclusion of de-oiled distillers grains. Um, and that, again, is a fairly typical response. You might see it, it looks kind of quadratic to me, but it wasn't significantly quadratic, where you get a pretty big drop in fee conversion going to 15% inclusion, and then, and then less dramatic decreases or improvements in pounds of feed per pound of gain as we go above 15%. But here again, notice that the red dots are the normal fat, compared to the blue dots at 15 and 30 percent inclusion. Certainly no effect here at 15 percent inclusion. At 30 percent inclusion, um, this was, if you just look at that comparison of those two means, those, those tended to be different where the normal fat distillers was a little bit better than the de-oil distillers in terms of conversion. And again, these were, these were backgrounded calf feds fed from January to June.
So in conclusion, in our growing studies, we only have two experiments so far, one, one where we looked at solubles and one where we looked at feeding modified distiller's grains. At 20% inclusion, the solubles with the fat in it was better. At 40% inclusion, there was no difference. And again, we think that's probably related to, to fat becoming a hindrance on fiber digestion. For modified distiller's grains, uh, in growing based diets, there was no impact whether you fed it at 20 or 40 percent, which leads us to believe that it doesn't matter whether they take the oil out or not when it's looking at using distiller's grains plus solubles in growing diets. The three feedlot studies we have, again, we had one where we fed 40 percent distiller's grains. We also had 27 percent solubles in that study. We have 35, 50, or 65 percent wet distiller's grains with and without oil in one study, and then we had the, the multiple levels of de-oiled and two levels of normal in the last study. And across those three studies, there was no difference in the first study, regardless of taking oil out or not. It was about 2.7% worse in the second study, but that was not significant. And so we, we have trouble concluding that there was any difference. And in the third study, you know, it was a little better if you had the oil out at 15% inclusion and a little worse and tended to be significant at 30% inclusion in the last study. So it gets a little bit difficult to make a, a general conclusion, but it's not having a huge impact on performance uh, when we take the oil out. I guess that would be our general conclusion if you add up all of these studies. If you're feeding the solubles, it's going to likely have more impact unless fat becomes an, an, uh, inhibits fiber digestion just because you take so much fat out of that syrup stream or the soluble stream. Now, I've got to point out, these data that I'm talking about only apply for this new process that all the plants are using today. Not all of them in Nebraska, anyway. There are a few other plants and a few other companies that are using a different process where they take out more fat and it's more intensive. And, in, and we've looked at some of those studies and we've done one and there's been others who've worked on that other process and it's more intensive and it probably makes the distiller's grains look more like corn in those studies, certainly not much better. So a lot of people have, have said, well, this is different than previous research. There are no pr the previous studies looking at the centrifuge, the, the centrifuge centrifuging process that's so popular today except for these studies that I'm presenting that I'm aware of. And so you can't compare these data to previous data where they were taking the fat out at the beginning by taking off the germ or something else. So I just want to point out that there's, there's multiple processes out there to feed lower fat distillers. These data only apply to the, to the plants that are using the centrifuges which is, by the way, the most popular approach today. With that, uh, this has all been supported research-wise, the funding for it by uh, uh, grants from the Nebraska Corn Board, as well as I want to show uh, appreciation to Kappa and Green Plains because they had to work pretty hard to, uh, to make those distiller's grains with and without the fat. So I'll formally end there, Rick, and maybe answer some questions. I see you've asked some. Yep. Um, would we expect similar results in cow diets with forage? You know, we use, we use the, the growing steer, frankly, as a bit of a model for the cow because in cows, our goal is to maintain them. And in fact, using too much distiller's grains or syrup, or, or syrup with cows is a challenge unless you're combining it with really low quality forage. Otherwise, the cows do too well and they get fat. So it's harder, it's harder to study these things, frankly, in a cow situation because your goal is to maintain the cow and not to fatten them. And so if they get a little bit more energy, they put on a little bit more fat, they don't necessarily gain more weight. So that's why we prefer using the, the forage growing, forage fed growing steer as a model to test differences in energy value. Um, but I would expect that the cow's response would be very similar to what we would see in a growing forage-fed calf diet uh, in terms of the calculated energy values. Now, what energy would I assign to the, to the solubles? You know, 
generally we still express the energy values of, of solubles in the stiller's grains, even in growing diets, relative to corn fed in growing diets. And so if we just use TDN as, as the energy value that we want to use as a, as a proxy, uh, I would assign a TDN to corn of about, oh, 82 in a forage-based diet. And our data would say that, that feeding modified distillers grains or solubles, excuse me, distillers grains or solubles to cattle would give you at least 130% of that energy. And so far, at least, uh, the, the de-oiled the solubles at 20% inclusion look like it was poorer than that. So I, it would have to be some fraction of that 30% above corn. But it depends on what level you're feeding. If you're feeding a higher level of solubles, then the de-oiled solubles were no different. Okay. Maybe we'll just wait here just for a, a little bit here, gain a lot very long. Uh, if anyone else has questions, uh, remember, just type those into the chat box there on the left-hand side of your screen. If people do, I, I know that this is for the recorded webinar, and some will watch this online later. If you have follow-up questions, you know, feel free to get in touch with one of us in, in the University Extension. Uh, again, all of these reports eventually will be published in our Nebraska Beef Report, which is available online at beef.unl.edu. Um, but I'd be happy to help with questions on it, too, as follow-up. You bet, Galen. Galen, I don't see any questions coming into the chat box, uh, so uh, we'll end the uh, session, the webinar, uh, now. Um, just want to remind people, uh, we do post our webinars. They're posted on beef.unl.edu. Galen just brought uh, the, uh, the site up. Uh, we have a navigator bar that goes directly to byproducts. We've added a new uh, navigator bar at the top of that website called webinars, or beef webinars. Yeah, it's up here. Okay. And then when you download on, uh, when you click onto that, it'll give all the uh, previous webinars as well as this webinar will be posted here within the next couple of days. Uh, check the uh, program, educational program schedule uh, on the right-hand side of our BEEF website, beef.unl.edu. Uh, we'll have another uh, BEEF and forage management webinar coming up later on in July. Check uh, uh, that uh, uh, section of the uh, BEEF website to see uh, time uh, and, uh, and what the topic uh, will be presented. With that, Galen, thanks a lot. You bet.